I'm Will Bowden. I'm Associate Professor in Roman Archaeology at the University of Nottingham. And we're working here at the Roman town of Caestus and St Edmund, uh, just to the south of Norwich. Um, and what we're looking at is we've done a whole series of geophysical surveys across this whole field and across the walled town which is which is behind us and now we're carrying out trial excavations um, to test the results of those geophysics uh, and see if what we found in the geophysics um, is actually reflected under the under the ground what we found here has been rather surprising uh, here we found ourselves in the middle of a cemetery, but it's a cemetery of rather abnormal burials. Uh, people who aren't being <laughs> buried according to the normal customs of Roman burial. Uh, we've got a chap laying on his side, um, seemingly being placed rather carelessly in a pit. We've got someone lay buried very deep down at the bottom of a very deep pit um, and we've got a child who's clearly suffered some quite significant head injuries at some stage during their life although these injuries have at least partially healed. Um, so it's in the normal place that we might expect a cemetery to be, i.e. it's outside the boundaries of the Roman town but it's clearly a cemetery for those who for one reason or another were treated differently perhaps they were individuals who were on the fringes of society and so who weren't accorded the normal uh, burial rites certainly on one individual um, the bones appear to be quite quite distorted as if this individual would have had certain difficulties moving around in life um, but it's also the it's also the position of burial, um, the fact that they're placed not in proper grave cuts but in uh, pits that have clearly been dug for some other purpose and then they have these uh, individuals put in them. Um, so the whole manner of burial is really rather, rather strange uh, together with the skeletal remains. It's not impossible that some of the individuals we're seeing have been executed as criminals these sorts of uh, people who were executed would very often be um, not be buried in a normal way and would be buried in different places to, uh, uh, to the normal cemetery. But in fact, I don't think this is really what we're, what we're seeing here. I think this is a cemetery for people who are perceived in life as being different from, uh, for one reason or another. Have you ever, in your experience, come across something like this? No, I've never dug a cemetery that's quite like, quite like this. Um, and really, never come across many parallels for, for this sort of cemetery. So it is really a rather exciting find. What do you, what do, you do here? What's your role? But whatever I'm told to do, basically. <laughs> uh, like most people here, without the yellow jackets, we're the volunteers. Why do you do it? Um, it's a passion. We, we all, I should say all of us dig somewhere else most of the year. So once or twice a week we'll dig, always as volunteers. But when there is an opportunity to do a three-week, you know, really get your teeth into it and uh, see something from beginning to end, so we're actually doing identifying features, digging them, recording them. The nice thing is that normally the skeletons are left to the paid professional archaeologists, but they've given us a wonderful experience here in allowing us to do them. My name's Mike Pinner. Uh, I'm a volunteer working for the Caster Project. Um, I'm a retired teacher. Um, I've been involved in the Caster Project since the start of it all, involved in the field walking and now in the excavation. It's been fun and it's intriguing and uh, I've always really been around archaeology so uh, you know to be involved in the project now is really good fun I think. The principal find I suppose was the one that sort of surprised us most because we were over in this area here um, about three days ago um, scraping down and a pot started to appear. So this is a pot. This is a little pot. It's uh, been made fairly locally. It's a greyware pot and it would have been made somewhere between the mid first and mid second centuries. I personally think it was made in the later first century. You can tell it's got this lovely high shouldered profile with this averted rim, which means it's still it's still in touch with its Iron Age predecessors, but it's going into the Roman period. And it's been used to contain 
burnt bone, which we have to think is burnt human bone, as so much care was taken in placing it in a wooden box and uh, burying it with quite a lot of ritual. And uh, you've got to think that a lot of lot of what was in the graves now now probably gone. A lot of probably organic things up there are no longer no longer found. How interesting a find is this for you? Well, actually, it, it, in this area in Norfolk, Roman burials are very underrepresented. Really, out of the whole of Norfolk, we've only got something like 50 burials, which is well probably a few more now, but really not very many when you consider the size of the county and how much Roman archaeology we have here. And in this Roman town, we have far more Saxon burials than we have Roman burials. So finding a Roman, any Roman burial, especially a Roman cremation, is really adding to the number of, um, of burials we have. And the information we'll be able to get from this when the bone is analysed and the soil is analysed and the pot is looked at more carefully will really add to our knowledge of burial customs in Norfolk in the early Roman period. Holding something that is so old. Hmm. That's lovely, isn't it? That's what makes being an archaeologist exciting. Uh, my name's Heather Wallace and I'm a professional archaeologist working in uh, Norfolk and other eastern counties. Um, and uh, I helped lift the, the main skeleton we had. Uh, everything's lifted very carefully and bagged very carefully. Uh, left side and right side all kept separate, the arm bones, the leg bones. Um, the central bones, the ribs are separate from the spine and the pelvis bowed separately as well. What will happen to it? It'll go off to a bone specialist who will do a full analysis and look at the bones and they'll hopefully, they should be able to identify age and gender uh, and also any diseases or trauma that the bones um, may have suffered. And the skeleton itself was quite extraordinary, wasn't it? The skeleton was extraordinary in that it was um, uh, positioned in quite an unusual manner, in that it was laying on its side. Uh, and I've never seen one uh, positioned like that before. Normally they're laying on their backs, as it's quite, you know, sort of quite a traditional method of, of burial. So uh, the way the legs were arranged with them slightly bent, um, one hand in front and one hand behind the body. Yeah, it was very unusual. They're all flints. Um, I mean, these are thousands of them that we've plotted. That we've plotted the positions of. Um, they're all struck, struck flakes, um, mainly the waste product from making, making flint tools. And so what we've done is, when we find them, we plot the position of them exactly, so that subsequently, if we find that bits of them actually fit together, um, we can start to work out uh, how the person was actually where the person making these things was uh, was sitting and how they were how they were doing it. Um, of course, you may not uh, be able to get any pattern out of it at all, but uh, you have to do it because you know, you, these are all things you can't... Uh, there's no benefit of hindsight really in archaeology. You only get one, one go at it, so you've got to record things uh, as, much as, you, as much as you possibly can. This is a, essentially a waste, a waste flake that's been taken off, uh, taken off a core, and then you can see you can see here where another flake has been has been uh, removed. Uh, all archaeology tends to raise more questions uh, than it answers, um, but really to fully understand this, we would have to come back and dig it on a larger on a larger scale, because really to understand whether this is an abnormal cemetery, you've also got to find the normal cemetery. And this is the first time actual human remains have ever been excavated in any sort of controlled fashion from this site. And that's something that you hope to do in the future? Um, I think so. We have a series of specific trial excavations to carry out over the next uh, two to three years. And then we will reassess what parts of the site we might want to look at, uh, look at on, a large, on a larger scale.